So in this short video, we're going to look at keyframes. Keyframes are the fundamental building block for making any animation within After Effects or any program where we can create animated movement. A keyframe records the position of any asset at any given time and will move it from one position to another based on what the keyframes are telling it. So for example, if a keyframe says that an orange square is on the left of the screen at one second, and then three seconds later, another keyframe says it's on the right-hand side, that orange square will move smoothly from the left to the right-hand side of the screen between those two keyframes. The bigger the difference between one keyframe and another, the faster an object will move, or the less time between an object, the faster it'll move. The more time, or the smaller the difference between keyframes, the slower an object will move. So let's look at how we can control keyframes, create them, and use them to finesse our movement. So I've already created a composition, and now I'm going to just create a simple shape. So on my toolbar, I have this rectangular shape tool. And because of the little triangle in the bottom corner, if I click and hold, I get other options that are nested underneath. I have a rectangle, rounded rectangles, polygons and stars and ellipse tools. So I'm going to start with my rectangle tool. Along I have my fill and my stroke. The stroke is the an outline around the shape. The fill is the color of the shape itself. If I click on either of those, I can change the color. And the width of the stroke is measured in pixels and I can click on that and I can change that number to make it narrower or wider. And if I set it to zero, there'll be no outline. To draw the shape, I simply click and drag with my composition. And if I hold down shift, it will lock it to a square. This will then create that shape within a shape layer. Shape layers function like any other layer. We have basic transform attributes, which every single layer will have, but it'll also have the contents. Whenever I draw with a shape tool, if I have that shape layer selected, additional shapes will be added to that shape layer. If I do not have a shape layer selected when I draw, it will create a fresh shape layer for that shape to sit within. Every layer has the same eye to make visible or invisible. And every layer, regardless if it's a shape or a conventional asset, if I select it and press the backspace key, it will delete that object. So I now have my orange square. I can then click and drag to place it anywhere on the screen. And I can rotate it using the rotation tool. And when I rotate, you will notice it is pivoting on this point here. This is the pivot point or the anchor point. When I rotate, it'll move around that. This anchor point is in the center of the shape layer, which is the size of our composition. Normally, however, if I was to rotate something, I wouldn't want it to pivot separate to itself. I want it to pivot on a corner or in the center of it. So I'm going to come up to my toolbar and I'll find the pan behind tool. This tool allows me to select my anchor point and move it. So now when I rotate, it rotates on that point. This is important because when I move this in keyframe, the position of this object, this orange square, is based on where this anchor point is. So the anchor point is separate from itself, we'll get some peculiar movement at times. So we always want to put this anchor point somewhere that is suitable and relevant to what we're moving. It could be on a corner, such as here. That way it will pivot like such. Or it could be in the middle of the object. And it'll pivot as it was. So with my object ready, I'm now going to look at the keyframes itself. And that takes us down to the timeline. 
My timeline here extends from left to right. The playhead, as you see, is this red line tracking over the shape. And the shape isn't moving because there's no keyframes for this shape. If we open the transform options for a layer, we will see a number of attributes that are present for every single asset, regardless of what it is. Its anchor point, which we just moved, its position on the screen, its scale, how large it is, its rotation, and its opacity, how transparent it is. All of these is represented by a set of numbers. You'll also notice that each of these has a little stopwatch next to it. These stopwatches are called toggle animation offer on. And this allows us to create keyframes. So let's work through the process. I'm going to start by moving my playhead to where I want to begin my animation. And I'm going to then turn on my toggle animation stopwatch for position. You will now see that it has created a small diamond on the timeline. This is a keyframe. This keyframe says at this point in time, the position for this square is equal to 311 to 402. I'm not going to move forward in time to a different point. I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to drag to position my square elsewhere on the screen. And when I do so, you'll see this line of dots will appear. You'll also notice that another keyframe has been produced. And you'll see when I move my playhead between these two keyframes, you'll see that the square moves between the two points. The grid reference for this keyframe is different to this one, and the software will smoothly move that square from one point to the next. Each frame of animation, the square moves the same amount every time. And it will do so in a perfectly straight line. However, we can change that. We can make as many keyframes as we want. So I wanted this to move in a curve. I could simply move to the central point and then reposition the square. Well, I see that it tracks up and down. Now this path is a Bezier curve. And that means it has grab handles that I can use to manipulate the shape of the path. I can also move them around to fine tune the shape that the square is going to move in. So let's play that through. If I have a movement and I'm happy with the path of the movement, but it's too fast or too slow, I can simply click and drag to select all the keyframes. And if I hold down the Alt key in my keyboard, I can drag them back and forth and it will scale the distance between them. The bigger the distance in time, the slower the movement because it has more time to complete those keyframes. If I scale them closer together, it'll move faster as it has less time to complete the same movement. If I am happy with the speed at which the animation occurs, but I want it to happen elsewhere in the timeline, I can simply move it to another point in the timeline by dragging them back and forth. If I have a keyframe that is incorrect, I can select an individual keyframe and press delete and then retune my animation. Now you'll notice the square moves the same amount more or less every single second. But movement doesn't normally happen like that. Organic movement normally speeds up and slows down depending on where it is in its movement. A hand reaching out for a cup does not travel at the same pace every inch. It will go fast and slow down as it approaches the cup without even thinking about it. 
we can create smoother, more fluid animations by creating what are called keyframe adjusts. This will speed up or slow down the movement of the object based on how close it is to a keyframe and whether it is approaching a keyframe or leaving a keyframe. For example, if I select a keyframe, I select this central one, and if I control click on it, I get a series of options including keyframe assistant. And I get three options. Easy ease, ease in and ease out. Easing in will slow down the movement as it approaches a keyframe. Ease out will start slow and then speed up as it leaves the keyframe. And Easy Ease does both. So I'm going to do Easy Ease to the central one. And the icon for the keyframe has now changed. But now, if I play, it slows down and then speeds up towards the end. You will notice that the gap between each of these dots, which is the position of the square on every frame, gets tighter and tighter, moving less and less as it approaches the keyframe, and then spreads out as it leaves it. If I do just one, such as ease out, it will start slow, Speed up, slow, and then back down. So this is then changing the flow of the movement to more naturalistic flow of movement. Now I've only keyframed the position so far, but you can keyframe an infinite number of attributes to any object. Anywhere you see a toggle animation on stopwatch, means you can keyframe and thus animate that attribute. So I can animate its scale. So I can turn its scale on for keyframing. I can set its scale at a low number. I can then move forward in time and scale that up. Move forward in time and then scale that back down. So now it travels and increases in size as it goes. Now you'll notice these keyframes aren't in perfect sync. I can move them to align them, but sometimes we need keyframes to happen in perfect alignment with other keyframes, or we need to move to a specific keyframe so we can tweak it. We can do that using these buttons down here. These ones allow us to travel back and forth, jumping from keyframe to keyframe as we move through our animation. That's allowing me to make sure I have perfect alignment as I move through my timeline. I will also apply some keyframe assist to those ones. And there's one last set of keyframes I'm going to apply to this animation. And that is a rotation. So I can start at an angle at the beginning, turn that on. I want it to just rotate smoothly from the start to the end. Now you'll notice there's something slightly artificial about this, ignoring the fact that it is an orange square flying through space. If this was in real life and filmed, this fast movement would have an element of blur around its edges, motion blur. But every frame of this is perfect and crisp and sharp. And that can be a little hard on the eye, especially when our minds expect there to be softness around things that move. So we're going to add, turn on what's called motion blur for this asset. 
and this will soften it and make it feel a little more real. To do this, we're going to go to the layer itself down here, and you'll see we have some options across the top, and one of them looks like a bouncing ball, and this enables motion blur. Now this merely turns motion blur on for the composition. We then need to tell an individual layer that it has motion blur. To do that, we might have to change what options we have visible to us. After Effects has so many options available, they are not all visible all of the time. So we have this button here to toggle switches. As we click that, we get different options. One of those is a matching bouncing ball. If we tick that on, we will then have motion blur. So we have a look at our square. You'll now see there's a soft edge. The more movement there is, the softer that edge will be. And you will see as I turn motion blur off and on, that blur will become visible or invisible. So let's watch it with some motion blur. It's subtle, but it is a little easier on the eye. And it can be quite a powerful tool. So that was keyframes. We covered how to create keyframes, how to move and scale them, delete them, and also how the keyframe assistant can create a more naturalistic movement. We also add a little motion blur so that we can make things a little easier on the eye and a little more grounded in what we expect in reality. Thanks for watching and hope you look forward to the next video.